first of all, we hadn't even, uh, after we, when we were making the first record, we never dreamed that we'd be making a second record. Been on the road for like two years. Yeah. We had to reconvene and sort of regroup and get our act together again. So we went to this little place on the island uh, up there. But I think Friday Harper was the beginning of that second record and, and uh, we started writing properly there. We set up our gear like this and just jammed. And it was pretty successful. I think that's where Paranoid was born, When I Grow Up was born, uh, Push It was born. Push It was the first single. Um, and we coupled with this incredible filmmaker and we made an extraordinary video, music video, unlike anything I have ever seen actually to this day. Still. We were really lucky with version 2.0 in that it came out and it was sort of the perfect weird record for a moment where in music there was this clash of analog and digital. Some of the songs on version 2.0 ended up with over a hundred tracks because we did lose our minds a bit. So there was this sort of really interesting new direction for the band that was getting incorporated into the recording process. When we started version 2.0, that was the first time we grappled with the digital beast known as Pro Tools. We barely worked in the same room together. A lot of hours in the studio, we, we would start at round one and we wouldn't leave till three. It was a, just a strange process. We didn't we didn't work like any other band I've ever met or worked with myself, and it was a very disjointed, strange process. But it worked for us, and it worked at that time. There's our rhythm section warming up. Practicing my headbanging. She's pretty difficult every day. Our songs were always almost more of a collage of, of different ideas and conflicting things and things that you maybe wouldn't expect to go together, but somehow they ended up working. Did a lot of press while we were on tour. Every city we went to, we would have to do interviews at the hotel or interviews at the venue. Sometimes we would go to a radio station or a TV station. Please welcome Garbage. And I think it just caught people's imagination at that time. And version 2.0 was really ridiculously successful. And uh, we just got lucky. When you're in the middle of it, you don't really realize what's going on as much. And now, thinking back, it's like we had a private plane and flew to London to play one song and then flew back <laughs> to California. <laughs> We got asked to uh, play Saturday Night Live and we said no because we didn't feel like we would be great on TV having been in the studio for a year. Uh, our manager now, Paul Kremen, said you'll never get another chance to do SNL. And lo and behold, they called us about six months later we went back and played SNL and I think we played pretty good. First record, I was yeah definitely new to, to the whole process of songwriting, and I I didn't really know my three compatriots, and I was uncomfortable, and I ran absolutely every idea through them. Coming into recording version 2.0, I had decided myself that I had to basically be accountable for every word. It's not like it's a closed circuit, but I have to be the one who's telling the truth. Somebody has to tell the fucking truth these days, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were thrilled.
thrilled because you know that's what we wanted. Is we didn't want to just like write songs and give them to a singer to perform. You know that's boring. We were just thrilled when Shirley would come in with a full-blown song. It was greeted with great enthusiasm and um, it was, yeah, a celebration was had. <laughs> <laughs>